Hi YouTube, look at me looking like I got ready for once in my life today. <laughs> this is not actually my fault. My fault. My I didn't actually do this to myself. I uh, had a photo shoot yesterday and the only reason I look like I got ready today is because I actually just didn't shower. <laughs> my friend put in crazy extensions and curled my hair and it was giant and big and beautiful and god I've never wanted curly hair so bad in my life. She took them out and my hair was still curly and so last night I was like oh, it'll be fun to have curly hair tomorrow so I just didn't shower. I'm sadly going to have to shower tonight because hygiene and so I was like okay well if I'm gonna look <laughs> somewhat decent for once might as well film a video. That brings us to the topic of today's video is Sewing. I finally got my little mini sewing machine. It's not so mini, actually. It's, you know, it's decent size. Um, but compared to the other mini sewing machines I've tried in the van, it's pretty big. Um, the other ones are have been like this big and they were really shitty. So uh, I didn't really make a video about those ever because I hate them and I would not recommend them for anybody. But I bought this got it on Amazon, finally arrived, and so now I'm going to make a video with it. Before I start making stuff though, it has come to my attention. After reading a lot of the comments on my other videos, like my other sewing videos, I have noticed that a lot of people are telling me that they like those videos, but they don't necessarily know how to use a sewing machine or where to start or, you know, they're intimidated by it or something. I decided to go back to basics and do kind of a little mini sewing 101 video for you guys just so that in future videos you have the same kind of skill set that I have and you can follow along that way. So after I finished filming this video, my sister sent me a message and was like, do you even know sewing basics? And now that I'm thinking about it, I really just made everything up that I know. So. If I'm doing everything completely wrong, please let me know. I am by no means an expert at sewing. I, that's like the whole premise of my channel is come watch Hannah not know what she's doing either. You don't know what you're doing. I don't know what I'm doing. It's the blind leading the blind, but I'm just trying things. That's the only way you can get better at stuff. I have a tendency to just jump in and try to figure stuff out as I go. I'm hoping that by showing that on camera to you guys, you kind of have a sense of, if she can do it, I can do it too. Also, sorry if you're hearing cars outside, I'm literally pulled over on the side of the road. It's very picturesque on this side and then there's cars rushing by over here. So, step one is going to be buy a sewing machine. Kind of obvious, but I actually get a lot of questions from people asking, oh, can I make this by hand? Like, sew this by hand? Um, and while you can, I mean, there was a time before sewing machines, I feel like that would be incredibly daunting and exhausting. I feel like people who sewed by hand in the olden days really had nothing else to do with their time. I don't know. Maybe it's a dying art. You can revive it. Most of the things I make, almost everything I make, I make on a sewing machine because it's quicker, it's more sturdy. I'm making this video also because I'm very excited that I actually got my little sewing machine. Um, I ordered it on Amazon. It's a Singer, Singer Start. So it's the smallest, most basic sewing machine that Singer makes. Singer is a sewing machine brand. It looks just like my Singer back home, just so it's a little bit more compact. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna thread our bobbin and bobbin is this. And this is what goes on the underside of the machine over here. I don't have a black bobbin threaded right now, so I'm going to make one. So I'm gonna take this empty spool and it's gonna go here. Then we take our black and we set it in here. And then we're just threading around, we're following the arrows on the sewing machine. So this arrow points this way, under and in through there, and then pulled around here and if you look at this diagram, it's going to go like this and around like that. And then it's gonna go over to the bobbin. And then you take 
this piece and you stick it through the little holes that come in the bobbin and come out the top. Push this over. I like to have this nice and tight, so I spin this back. And that's how it's gonna start. And then you're gonna push the foot pedal when the machine's on, obviously. And then this is gonna start winding. Okay, so now I've got my bobbin all wound. And this one goes on the bottom on the inside. So now that we have the bobbin, this part of the machine comes off. And this can be different for every machine, so just make sure you're reading your machine's manual. This is where the bobbin's gonna go, and you're gonna pull this little tab and take this out, and this already has bobbin in it. <laughs> so I'm gonna take my old bobbin out, and this one is gonna, oof. So I'm gonna stick it in like that, and then this thread is gonna get pulled up through here and through this piece right here. And that's gonna come out right there. So it's under this little shield type thing. This piece right here is what keeps the tension on this so that it keeps it nice and tight. And this can be adjusted with this little thing right here. And if you turn that, it adjusts how tight this piece holds the tension on the string. A lot of the problems that I've run into with my thread getting jammed has been because this sometimes tightens or loosens on its own. And I'll just go in and like loosen it up or tighten it. And a lot of times that fixes whatever problem I was having. So now I'm gonna pull this out, pull it in and then stick it back where I got it from. The next step is going to be taking your thread and you're gonna stick it on the spindle. You're gonna weave it around here. Again, follow the arrows. And then this time, like my machine says, I'm gonna pull this here and down, down this little crevice. Again, there's arrows usually on all sewing machines that show you how and where it goes, looping around under there. And then this silver thing can be pushed up like this with the hand crank that's over here. So I'm pushing it up so that I can thread the thread around it and through. And then the thread comes down. Then the thread comes down here and then the thread goes around, if this focus, um, around this little thing in the back and comes down and then you thread the needle. And again, you can adjust the, where the needle is using the hand crank. So I'll pull it up like that, and then I'm gonna stick it through the, the eye of the needle. And there you go. Now it's through. And then I'm gonna pull it off to the side because now I need to thread the bobbin up through here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this off to the side I'm going to crank the hand crank. Make sure you've got some length on this still so that it doesn't get sucked into the machine. And then while I crank the hand crank, what happens is this gets shorter, right? And when I pull this, it loops around the bobbin thread. It has pulled a loop of the bobbin up. Now I'm going to take a pair of scissors or anything that's just gonna pull it through and I'm gonna pull I'm just gonna pull that up and through and I've got both pieces of thread out where I want them to be put this piece back on and now both threads are under the foot this is the foot and pulled to the back and now my sewing machine is set up to use and then I'm gonna show you what all the knobs do now this knob is going to be the knob that makes the machine go in reverse. You'll hold that down and press the foot pedal when you wanna reverse your stitch. This is gonna be the kind of stitch you wanna do. This is kind of the most basic one. It's just a straight stitch. And then these are all the different zigzags and wider zigzags. This is a very basic machine, so um, it doesn't, a lot of other machines will have another knob over here that'll adjust like a length, the length of the stitch. And then these are buttonhole stitches. So these are helpful for making buttonholes. This is the hand crank. That's what I've been using to turn 
this guy over here. And then this is the tension. So this knob is what is going to um, adjust how tight and how loose your stitches are. So now that you know what all the knobs do, I'm gonna start sewing. So I have my piece of just white scrap fabric. This is from like an old pillowcase that I spilled on and now I've just got this piece that I cut out from it. So if you look behind your machine, there is a lever here that pushes the foot up and down right on this back side and that's what's going to keep your fabric nice and taut you're going to place your fabric under the foot and then you're going to push this down and make sure both of your pieces of thread are out of the back and now you're ready to sew So I am personally not going to explain the different uh, tensions and how to set your settings correctly, just because I also don't actually really know that. <laughs> what you're gonna have to do is look at your, like your user manual that comes with the machine or Google it. Also just play around with the buttons on your machine. So when you do a bunch of different stitches on scrap fabric like this, what it does is it gives you an idea or how things are gonna turn out or what changes what. So what I'll do a lot of times if I'm trying to switch up the stitch is I'll mess with the buttons and I'll take a piece of scrap fabric like this and I will just play around with what kind of tensions work and what they what don't and like where the sweet spot is. So if you look at this, the first stitch that I did had very loose stitches in the back. And then the second one was a little better. It was a little strange. I'm sorry if you can't see this, it's not in focus. Um, and then the third one ended up being really nice. So if you look like that, it kind of looks like you can see the difference right here. Just mess around with it. Um, I don't want to give you any bad information on what exactly, like what are the right tensions for each stitch. So you're just gonna have to do that on your own. But luckily the internet is a never ending resource. So once you get the stitch that feels right, and nice and like even on both sides. It's not too loose on one side, not too tight on one side. Now what we're gonna start trying is we're going to learn how to start a stitch and end a stitch. So when you start a stitch, you're gonna start by going forward a little and then you're gonna back up for, you know, maybe a second or so and then you're gonna continue forward. And that's always gonna be how you wanna start stitching because that's what ties off the end. If you look at my ends here, they're not tied off and they're loose. So what can happen is they can come undone. So you see how easy it was for me to just undo that? That's what reversing your stitch helps with, is it just ties off the beginning and then you can continue onward. So we're gonna do that right now. We're just gonna go forward. And then we're gonna hold this button down and we're gonna go back over it. And then we can go forward again. And then to end a stitch, you do the same thing. And you just hold it down for a little bit and then go back forward. And then you're all done. To raise the needle, just use the hand crank and then lift your foot pedal, pull this out. And then on the side, there's a little razor blade that you can cut on. So it's gonna look like this. You're just gonna have a little bit of a thicker little spot right here. And that's where you started and ended your stitch. And it's nice and tight. It's kind of locked into itself. So it's not gonna come undone. So now that you know how to do a stitch, just a straight stitch, that would be enough for you to at least start messing around with sewing and seeing like what things do. I highly recommend looking at articles of clothing that you already own or even like pillowcases and just looking at the stitches and like looking at how things are turned like right side out or inside out just to kind of get a gauge for how things are put together. One of the most important things to learn is how to make a hem like this. So instead of having these like little frayed edges, how that is done is really easy. Essentially you just fold over once and then you fold over twice. And then they just stitch along this edge right here. And by they, I mean you. 
what will help this process a lot of times i'll just freehand this um because once i stick this under the foot of my machine it stays pretty pretty well but to make this easier for first timer you're gonna want to pin this um another way this is easier is if you iron this down so that it's nice and flat and stays like this and then pin it but i'm just gonna pin it because i obviously do not have an iron in my van <laughs> Okay, so now that we have it all pinned, we can take this. And the reason I put the pins in facing this direction was because they need to go in sharp side first so that you can pull them out as you go. It's gonna be really difficult to, if I did it the other way. Also, if I put them in the other way and I flipped it like this, then I've got a bunch of fabric shoved into the corner of my machine. I'd rather have it on the free edge. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line this up. You need to decide where you want your stitch to go along here. Ow, I just poked myself. <laughs> if I want it just about that far, now I look at this metal panel. I see where the edge of my fabric is lining up along these little grooves, and that's what's gonna help me keep my stitch straight. So now that the foot pedal's down, I can start my stitch, and I can take this first needle out because my foot pedal is holding the fabric in place. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go forward for a tiny split second, and then I'm gonna back it up to lock that stitch in. And now I'm gonna go all the way forward and I'm gonna maintain the level of this line. So now I've got my hem. Normally it's a thread that's gonna match the color of your fabric so you won't see it as much. That is how you hem off your little frayed edges, which is really nice to do because it makes it look nice and clean. Um, you can always also, if you don't want something like this, you can always get a lot closer to the edge than I did. This was a practice run, so it really wasn't that important to me. That's like the most basic thing. And then the only other thing you need to know how to do to get started with kind of sewing stuff together. So this would be like a pant hem, right? So this would be like the thing that goes at the bottom of your pants. And this is just the edge and it's not sewn to anything. It's just sewn to itself. The only other thing you need to know is how to close things together so that maybe you create the pant leg. If this is the, the side that I want outside, I'm gonna put that on the inside when I'm sewing. I'm gonna sew down this and then I'm gonna flip the whole thing inside out so that it's all tucked together. So instead of it looking like this, it's going to be tucked on the inside like this. Grab your fabric, put it edge to edge like this. Make sure your, your hem is flip side out, right? Like wrong side out. Once you have that straight line down the side, you're gonna take your piece of fabric and you're gonna flip it inside out. And it's a tube, right? So that could be like a pant leg or an arm sleeve. I think that's kind of the basics that I use anyway, really, all you really need to know is how to put together your sewing machine and sew a straight line. That's pretty much the basis of everything that I make. Um, anything else you just are going to want to just mess around with. Don't be afraid to screw up. You're going to screw up. Buy some really cheap shitty fabric that you don't care about or like go to the thrift store, find a big sheet that's like a dollar, right? And just go hard at practicing things just mess around um pull things out of your closet look at how they're made figure out how they made a rounded edge or how they made a seam that doesn't look like the shitty one that i made <laughs> um just look at things and see how they're made that's kind of i guess i do that for everything not just sewing i'm gonna say that's probably the majority of how i learn how to do things is i just look at things that are already done you can only get better by practicing. So make some shitty shit. 
as you go, you just kind of learn new things and Google is your best friend. You're already looking up YouTube videos on how to make stuff and looking at my videos. There are people who are way better at explaining things, way better at making things, way better at like explaining how to do things the correct way than me. Go look at other people's channels. It's a good idea. <laughs> go do more research outside of just this video because I know that there are going to be craft people who comment on this video and they're like, actually, that's not what that's called. And actually, uh, that's not how you do that. And I'm going to find out things as well. I, yeah, I have nothing else to teach you. I'm going to make more sewing videos, hopefully from the van now that this video is out of the way and you guys can follow along. I just wanted to make sure I got this one out of the way so that we were all on the same page. Okay. Well, I've had all the fan doors closed for the whole entirety of filming this so i'm sweating so i'm gonna open the doors now and say goodbye